molecular movement in the brains. No, 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 no. This is actually the, the pitfall of naturalism and physicalism. Listen to the statement. Freedom and meaning and values are all patterns of molecular movement in the brain. So you can find freedom in the brain. Hmm? You can find freedom in the brain. How can an event be true or false? It's the same problem. Some events are true or false. I just said, dude, are you listening to me? I said not everything that's not a proposition. Okay, listen closely. This is an inductive argument. I'm saying without appealing to the thing you're saying is an event, the proposition, is everything else in the world as an event or an object non-true or false? Yes or no? No, I'm not backpedaling, dude. You want to jump on and walk through it with me? I'm not backpedaling. Hello, base theory. Can you hear me? Hey, what's up, Jim Bob? You can just call me Grayson. Oh, hey, Grayson, thanks. Okay, so let's just walk through this. I'm not talking about propositions because that's the thing in question. So you're saying propositions are events and there's one event that can be proposition. It happens to be proposition itself. I'm saying, I'm asking you mm. for every other event or object that you witness in the world, that you and I both witness in the world, objects, events, waterfall, everything out there in the external world that's just operating uh -huh. as event or objects. You would, would you agree they're non-propositional? Yeah, yeah. The, the only okay. thing that I'm aware of that can be true or false are propositions. Got it. So if every other event that you know of is non-propositional, that is to say every event and object we know of in the world, every single one that we have access to today, can't be true or false. It's just not in the same category, right? To my knowledge, yeah. I would agree with that. Okay. But you're saying there's only one that you know of, right? In reality. Yeah, All probably. of reality. Okay. So the only event counter to every other event and object you know of, there's only one that you know of that's that has this feature of being true or false and it's the proposition. Yes, that's correct. Can I expound okay. upon that a little bit, or do you want to continue? Asking yeah, no, no, I, I'll let you. But I just want to ask you: Do you see from that, in that 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 even though inductive reasoning doesn't give us certainty, that you're making a very unlikely uh, assertion that's not compatible with uh, our I, particulars? I, I don't, and I can explain why, if you will allow me. Okay. Well, I, I just want to frame it when you, when you, because the only necessary thing that you have to provide here is what's physically different, because you're a physicalist in this argument, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So what's physically different about a proposition as an event that allows it to be propositional that the other events don't have? What's the, the property physically of molecular movement? No, other events have physic, uh, have specific patterns of molecular movement. I said, what's the thing that the that proposition the has? No, no, no. But that, I, that's not the answer because what my question was is, what is it a proposition has as a physical property that makes it propositional that the other things don't have that makes it distinct? And your answer actually isn't that answer because those other events, waterfalls and car crashes, have what, what you just said. Um, no, they actually don't. They have other different patterns of movement that are not identical to the patterns of movement. No. Okay, fine. Brain okay, hold on. Hold on. That's fine. But here's the thing. A waterfall doesn't have the exact pattern as a car crash. So that doesn't answer exactly. the question. What is it about? Just saying no, they're no, no, different it does, it does. doesn't tell me. A waterfall... A waterfall's pattern of molecular mo movement is that of a waterfall. That's why it's different than a car crash. This is very obvious stuff, Jimbo. No, a waterfall and a... No, don't say it's obvious. A waterfall is non-propositional. It's an event. A car crash is non-propositional. It's an event. Exactly. The question isn't what's the difference exactly. between the organized events of molecules between a waterfall and a car crash. We already know that. I'm asking you what is it about a proposition 
as an event, a physical event that's reduced to molecules, that's different about all of those other things that makes it propositional. I didn't ask whether it's different. I asked you what makes it pro what makes it propositional and proof and truth act. Yeah, and my answer, what is it physically? Okay. Can I Jim Bub, can I please just have a second to actually give an answer on this stuff? It feels like you haven't wanted I'm, me to give a real answer, so I'm just going to go ahead. And I give need one you to. Like, I need you. Okay, I'll give. I'll let you answer. You, I'll let you answer oh, if man, you state dude, back you my really question. You really don't want me to answer this. No, I do. You I want really you to give me my question me back. Can you give me my question back? Okay, and I can then do I'll that. Let you I can do that. Yes, okay, I can do thank that. Thank you. You're asking what is it specifically? What physical property is it specifically about propositions that give them this special property of being able to be true or false? that other things don't have because otherwise it's just special pleading unless I can expound what physical property they have that sets them apart. Mm -hmm. Is that you agree? That's your question, right? Yeah. Physically. Yep. Okay, exactly. Yes. And the answer to that question is the specific patterns of molecular movement that go on in someone's brain when they are having a propositional thought. Now, let me expand upon that. Okay. Because you're saying, look, it's special pleading. You're saying only this thing can have true false, but nothing else can. But that's true of all, like something like things that are red. You're saying, oh, oh, so you're saying that there's some little physical thing that everything that's not red in the universe has. But but all, only the red things have it. And that's what makes them red. That's special pleading. It's not because there's a specific. No, it's not. No. Hold on. Let me stop you right there. No, let me stop. Red. No, let me stop you right there. The red is not is disanalogous. Why? Because red is a uh, result of something that's invariant called light frequency so it can be isolated even if it's on a even if it's on a uh, spectrum still it's on some some you can point to something as a referent called light frequency and you could extrapolate of why something is red or how it's red or what things are red it doesn't it doesn't follow that just because something else uh isn't red that I that it's the same argument I'm making now to your answer uh just to repeat your answer base theory you said I asked you what specific about the proposition physically that's different from a waterfall and these other things that make it propositional and you said it's the specific pattern of molecules right um a lot of the pattern of molecular movement yes movement okay so then the question is what is it about that specific pattern of molecular movement that allows a proposition to be outside of the the category of every other event because that doesn't tell me anything. That just says the it's, the, the yeah. movement is okay. different. That doesn't tell me how it's propositional and the other yeah. things aren't. Oh uh, yeah. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. So basically, the the difference is is that neural activity, um, the specific pattern of neural activity, can reference other things. So when I look at an apple, like a red apple, there's a specific pattern that occurs in my brain, <laughs> and if that pattern is, is induced without the red apple, that will ref the red apple i will have the thought of the red apple or i will have an experience like a red apple it will reference the red apple even without the red apple there that's okay. something that's hold unique on. to that specific okay hold on that is you're saying that red apple pattern okay base theory your answer is now the difference is that it's capable of referencing things yeah okay that doesn't answer it because you're just asserting the capability. I'm asking what is it a physically about a proposition that's based in physicality unique in, as physicality that allows it to reference things i didn't say what what do you think a proposition is doing or an evaluation is doing give granting it its capability the capability i know i know the assertion of its capability i'm asking what is it specifically about the physicality that permits this capability you're asserting it has the capability that's what's different no that's the thing in question i'm asking you from a physicalist view you're going to have to tell me what's specifically different about the physicality that allows it to be a uh, uh, reference uh, capability. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. I could do it in one answer. The okay. pat in one word rather, sorry. The pattern. The pattern. So my pat my ability to reference an apple is exactly the molecular identical to yours. It's not exactly molecularly identical, but it's going to be very similar. And in fact, there's going to be certain neurons in your brain that only activate when you're thinking about apples. Okay, but that, but still, but still, the you're still reasserting the capability without telling me 
how is it very for particular kinds of molecular organized uh, systems at the at that level permit what makes it different than other molecular because everything else is so uh, composed in acting in a certain way uh, from the molecular standpoint out there in the world and you're you're just saying it it looks different there's a different look in organization of this pattern of molecular behavior in the brain but that doesn't tell me how it suddenly can access and be outside of the category of every other event it doesn't tell me how it is it, it just tells me that it is so you keep reasserting that yeah, it okay, is so look, look, look. i'm saying me, how is that the case yeah okay because it's because it's a specific unique pattern that no other pattern of molecular movement is doing it's doing a specific pattern that correlates to something in the external world or internal world like internal thoughts as well but there's a correlation that you can that you can see you can test if I, every time i put an apple in front of your face you're going to have that specific neural correlate circuitry act, like activity start activating every time and then if you generate that exact pattern in your brain you're going to start having references of apples acro across your conscious attention. Like you can establish this as a cause and effect kind of thing. It's I get, it's a I get it. Base theory. Correlation. I get you. I, I understand what you're asserting again, but it seems like you're not getting out of the, the out of the cycle of reasserting what it's doing versus how is what is it about the specific the specific organization of a pattern by the way which we all somehow share but where they're different so you're in a, in a contradiction that the specific pattern you have of recognizing and ma making references isn't identical to mine so now now we have different patterns right that that you're saying well no it's the specific pattern that allows it to be to reference an apple yet you admitted my specific pattern is not the same as yours and neither no one in the chat's specific pattern is molecular exactly the same and so yeah, you're, what you're right. all you're saying is that that there's other people now have this pattern that's that's particular to their their brain that allows that but it doesn't answer the yeah. the question right that the question again is Jimbo, if you're wait, a physicalist hold on. <laughs> hold on. If you're yeah, a physicalist, let me just, let me just, I just need to clarify real quick that the, the, the pattern, the patterns are a little coarse correcting, like, like the fine grain details kind of get washed out for the overall pattern. And I did specify in my previous answer that like your pattern of activity when you see our think about apples is going to be similar enough to mine to where like a sophisticated enough machine or an AI would be able to tell that we're both thinking about apples. Like it'd be close enough to where a, a machine could generally just read people's thoughts like that technology is like not a hundred yeah. years away. You know what I mean? Now I understand what you're saying. You're saying, but that's a different argument. The, the, the argument of whether or not you can connect to someone's brain and see different parts light up for certain references doesn't is irrelevant to the question. The question is again, there's, there's out there in the world, there's a bunch of molecules that, that act in a certain way that form shapes, let's say, and behaviors that such that we can seek out, uh, particulars like a like a waterfall a big waterfall a small waterfall an elephant these things you agree are descriptively the same right that they're organized um patterns of molecules right that they're 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 behaving in a certain way right they're, they're, such that they can not, be observed they're they're not descriptively the same they're completely different patterns no no hold on no no you don't 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 wait hold on don't go anywhere no hold on don't go on the description is that they're molecules in motion let's say just generally speaking they're all like this is a word they're game, all but sure you could generally sure. describe them all as molecular I'm, I'm movement just, sure i'm trying to establish a category you can name it yourself what's the category of all actions and events in your worldview molecules in motion is that well, good enough? Dude, if you want to just call everything molecular movement fine it's very general Perfect. i get it it's not specific per at all well, no, it's great to start general and then get more specific, right? It's a good a good method, right? I mean, it's it's inductive. Are you waiting for my I agreement? mean, deductive, right? <laughs> it's deductive. It's deductive because if I say if we say okay, from your worldview everything's molecules in motion, great. So, the question is if everything's molecules in motion, what is specific about the physicality not the capability because that's reasserting the capability i'm asking what is it specifically about the physicality of 
what you call a proposition in the brain, which is a small segment of molecules in a particular kind of motion that grants it the capability. I'm not saying, I'm not asking you to reassert the capability. I'm asking you to no, identify you. what's specific you. about the, the, the organization of the molecules in the movement that makes it suddenly have the capability. Right, right. No, and I feel like you should, at this point in the conversation, already know what my answer to that is. It's the specific Reasserting its capability. Pattern. No, it, I'm not. It's the specific pattern of that's the, the molecular question. movement in the brain. That's not, I got that's you. not a capability. No. That's not begging Hold the on. question. No, no, it there doesn't answer anything. specific pattern. Yes. You, wait, wait, wait. Let, that, me, that let me just get this sentence out. Let me just it, dude. one sentence, Jim Bob. One, one sentence. Okay, you would agree that there is a specific and unique pattern that occurs like just with the apple example right whenever i the concept of apple is in my brain there is a very specific and unique pattern in my brain you agree with that right i don't know what pattern you're pointing to i know what you're saying is that there's there's a section of the brain that has something going on as hardware uh that is doing the the work to reference to make a reference to the apple itself but the the your answer is this based is I said what's different about that pattern over there the waterfall is a specific pattern too um, I'm asking you what is the specific um, aspect of the of the physicality of the pattern but you're just saying it's a specific pattern that allows for referencing well that's the assertion of capability I'm asking you what is it about the pattern now because you're saying it's a specific pattern. Now I'm going to ask you, what is it about the specific pattern in the physical? Like you have to reference okay. its physicality, sure. not its sure. capability. I got you. Sure. Okay. Okay. So just to clarify, because it feels like there's a little bit of ambiguity about what I mean by like a pattern of movement or whatever. Well, I want to clarify what I'm talking about, right? In the brain, in the neurons, whenever there's neural activity there, people describe it as like electricity often, but it's actually like the movement of salt ions like back and forth in but like in and out of the neurons as well as like neurotransmitter molecules the movement of those molecules in that specific pattern of movement that corresponds with thinking about apples the concept of apples that's what i'm talking about right i want to be very specific that that is what i'm referring to okay so if we can be on the same page about that then that'd be great and we can move on from here well no because that answer is asserting the capability right but that's the thing in question you're saying. Well, there, I, didn't, I didn't assert because, any capability. I just said, yeah, let's you did. Agree it's that referencing that's the pattern that we're talking about. You're talking about reference. Is reference not an act uh, a capability? Can a okay, can wait, a waterfall? Wait, wait. Hold on. Can a waterfall reference another waterfall? No. Is it incapable? Right. It's incapable. Pretty much. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, again, it's back to the external the external world as a whole. For everything we know about the external world. All of its patterns of represent of all of its patterns and its behaviors of molecules at the molecular or, or macro um, is incapable of referencing other things. Now you're saying I'm asking you what's different about a proposition isolated as a little sliver of molecules as a, as a pattern that make it capable of referencing? And you say this pattern references an apple. Do you understand the problem here? You're just stating that it references. Okay, so I'm asking, asking how does molecules okay. reference? Yeah. How? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see, I see, I see. So, okay, there was a lot there to respond to, but basically um, what you're talking about is like the overall, like how do a bunch of molecules create like consciousness in general? Because I think like the specific neurons, like the patterns that, that correspond with the apple, right? They only have meaning because they're in our brains they have to have the rest of the brain around them in order to have any kind of meaning like just that neural pattern alone isn't going to correspond with apple unless you have all of the rest of the circuitry to interpret it around it is that what you're getting at well i mean it's your your statement so you're including the brain as a machine right you need for the pattern that you're using a specific pattern of molecules that it's attached to this other mechanism called the brain and you're saying the brain and the the pattern itself are bo are bonded together, right? All right. Now, now what you have, if we're reducing it to the initial category, is the brain and the pattern itself. The pattern is kind of 
indistinguishable of the brain. It's part of the brain. And so now you have this thing called the brain um, that is also Wait, really quick, organized. Really quick. Le really quick. Let me just distinguish one thing. The, the pattern of molecular movement, that is like an activity that the brain is doing. It's not like identical to oh, the sure. brain. It's an activity the okay. brain does. Okay. Right. So like the water, the molecular structure of water is not identical to a waterfall falling. There's a behavior and then there's a molecular structure yeah, it, it's, of what, exactly. what's behaving. It's an activity. Great. So again, the question would be there's waterfalls that's made of molecular uh items water hydrogen oxygen and it but it's doing something so that's a different thing than what it is right but yes. if a proposition is an event right from your view then what is a proposition made of and what is it doing okay so if we have an example of like a false proposition that we can talk about right like if i say that apple is purple Right. That's a, an example of a proposition we could talk about when I say that or when you hear that, like in your brain, basically your brain is having the neural circuitry for apples and purples and connecting them together into basically a, 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 a physical state of affairs, like a, a hypothetical state of affairs, basically, where there's a purple apple. And it's showing like, you know, if there was a purple apple, this is the brain state that would occur it would be I would look at the apple and it would be the purple brain state and the apple brain state at the same time. And then when okay, I was stop the there, apple, stop there. Hold on. No, that's perfect. Okay. Okay. I, so if you isolated a, uh, a little, uh, if you isolated an event of apple, right, that you're identifying as apple, a pattern, a molecular pattern that's doing a behavior, right? Could you, could you take that physical thing and transport it into another brain and this, they, this, that brain would interpret apple? Um, you could, but it wouldn't be exactly the same on a molecular level, but because of that fine coarse grain correction that happens in our brain, you could effectively induce that brain that like thought into somebody else's if you could molecular like m manipulate it on that small molecular level, like precisely enough, then yes, you could. So if someone never saw an apple before, the entailment of your position is that you can extract a proposition as a physical uh, collection of molecules in a certain pattern and you could tra you could implant a proposition into someone's head as physical and it, and they would be able to interpret it even if they've never seen an apple before um it would be true for some things and not true for others for example like you need the fundamental groundwork like you can think of a purple apple even if you've never seen one because you've seen an apple you already have that groundwork in your brain you already know purple. Okay. You can put them together in your imagination. We could induce a purple apple. But if, if there's mm -hmm. something that you like have no groundwork for seeing because of like neuroplasticity, like maybe like if I, uh, I, I forgot what example that you just used about transplanting yeah. in somebody's brain, but an, if it's just, the, just an apple that I haven't seen before. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if I've never seen an apple before, um, like maybe my circuitry that's associated with apples, if I have seen an apple, I can't transplant to your brain because you don't maybe even have the even the circuit the connections formed yet because you don't have that past experience so some things are you could transfer and some things are too di dis distinct and too different but something okay. are similar enough you could could i remove Sorry for that was specific a long can i remove certain particular or universal concepts from the brain as physical things and i just wouldn't have them probably yes because like for example like it, the, like those specific neurons in my brain that core that only activate when I'm thinking about apples. If you remove mm -hmm. those, then like in some way, my concept of apple will have been removed. Like I'll be missing some aspect of it. Okay. So if something like propositions that are true or false, you're saying that if that's true, if, it, if it's true of an apple, then you could remove certain propositions like two plus two equals four and essentially remove the truth from someone's brain physically. A truth statement. Um, yeah, they would have to like rediscover that two plus two equals four. Like they would basically forget it. Yeah. They would forget two plus, but that, that would be then pointing to what a memory is versus what an evaluation yeah. of a memory is. So in your view is a wait, wait, memory. Just to clarify, just to clarify, both of those are physical. 
the, the, both the memory and the evaluation of the memory memory are both physical activities. Evaluation is a process, a physical process. Yeah. Okay. Is the physical process identical to the content of the process? Um, I'm pretty much on the fence about that. I don't really know how to answer that question, but like, for the sake of this argument, I can lean yes. So then what's the distinction between the content and the physicality then? Because it seems like you'd need a process to process the content. In this case, there's activity in the brain and the content of that activity is apples or uh, mathematical statements or whatever else we want to input there. But if the process is identical to the content, then um, it seems to be that it's... it's uh, the, the distinction between a process and the content, I'm not sure what's the meaningful distinction between the process and the content then, if it's identical. So this is this is the reason why I'm on the fence about it, right? Why I hesitated. Because to me, like the content is kind of like the subjective experience of these processes, which like our subjective experience of these physical processes, the activities in the brain, um, like I, I, at some to some degree, they're identical, right? Like to some degree, like, when I write a sentence on a piece of paper, it's identical with the ink on the page. But it also like there's the subjective experience of of the sentence. There's there's also that kind of content, which no, wait, like, wait, wait, I hesitate stop. whether or not they're identical. Wait a second. Um, you, did you just say if I write a sentence that the meaning of the sentence and the content is identical to the ink? No, no, no. I'm not the oh, okay. meaning of the cut. Like basically, I the way I would think about the meaning of like, if I see a sentence on a piece of paper where I think the meaning is occurring is like, basically there is no meaning to that unless there's a, someone to interpret that sentence. There has to be a brain or a machine or something that is equipped properly to decode that meaning and get that meaning. Um, and, yeah. and so the meaning would exist like in the brain. Yeah. That's, basically. yeah. That's why I asked you, uh, Grayson is because we make a distinction between the medium and the content. For instance, if I say Apple, I'm perturbating air through the, through the atmosphere and it, and it's arrives as sound waves to people around me. But we would never say the air perturbation, the process itself is identical to Apple. It's, it's something that's being used as a medium to then deliver transmission of something that means something that correlates with the sound but the sound apple isn't identical to an apple the same way ink and a shape on the page is never identical to the symbol uh keep case in point two different symbols in two different cultures written on paper would be perceived completely different so that means like the medium is never identical to the content that's why from that perspective if if we know that about everything else we perceive then that's why I asked you, do you think the, um, and it's fine if you hesitate, but that's why I asked you, is the content identical to the medium inside the brain? Because every, everywhere else we look, it's not. It's not so, the case um, that the content's identical to the medium. So my connection is a little bad. You may have noticed a little bit of lag. So, you kind of dropped okay. out in the middle of that, uh, but I think I got the gist of what of everything that you were saying. Um, no, no worries. Like one of one of the reasons why I would like like I said, I'm kind of on the fence. I just gave you one reason. I'll give you like the other reason. Right. Because I think that the, they are so strongly linked, like the actual brain activity and then my own subjective experience of that activity are mm -hmm. so strongly linked. Like I do think that subjective experience, consciousness itself is a distinct pattern of brain activity that has to be generated by that, the like these neural circuits. But I'm saying yeah. like. I, I think that it, the, the, the link is so strong yeah. that you could induce like a specific thought or idea in somebody's head, like we're saying, if you could precisely enough manip, manip, manipulate the molecules in their head, you could induce a thought. And so it just seems like there's such a strong link that they might actually just be identical and the subjective experience of it is part of like the illusory aspect of that activity. I don't know. Right, but you would agree that everything else, as far as medium and content in the external world that we that we look at and reference, um, they're not identical. But you're saying in the brain they very mal might well be, um, and that's a fine if you know it's just kind of a hunch from your per perspective, not holding you to it. Um, the last question I'll have for you, I'll, I'll let you go, is um, if you make the statement that 
um, propositions or effects of physics in the brain. Is there any way for you to demonstrate that that's true? Um, yeah, sure. Like, um, similar to how we demonstrate like Brownian motion is the result of like specific atomic interactions by like breaking it down to like how one atom interacts with one other atom and then saying, okay, like when there's a bunch of atoms, it's really, really complicated. And that's what Brownian motion is, is caused by. When you look at just, when you break it down to just the, the single interactions, right? When you, when you mm -hmm. break it down to like when a proposition goes off in my head or a concept or whatever, you can tell, hey, there's a sp very specific neural circuit in my head that is going through that activity and, and moving a certain pattern of way. And then like when you mess with that, you know, you can establish cause and effect by messing with it, having an experiment, an independent dependent variable to manipulate it, see how that changes the concept, uh, establish causality between the two things. Um, you, you could by like, you know, molecular neurobiology establish these neural correlates. Okay. So does that mean that based on all the methods that hypothetically you're saying could be the case, you're saying that you could put in a bunch of inputs in someone's brain and they'll spit out only true statements? Um, I, hypothetically, sure. Um, if we, it, Before I go, we were kind of getting to the part where we talk about how these physical activities can be true or false, which is something that I often hear you say and was kind of the whole point that I was hoping that we would get to in the conversation. So if we could, yeah, no. we were talking about the, the proposition, right? The apple is purple. I, I'm saying that uh, the, the reason I brought you on is because I've, I think it's special pleading still to say every other event and object we know of in the known universe is non-propositional. Uh, but there's only one event that you appeal to that is that it that is propositional so it's the special one that doesn't follow the same category categorical rules as everything else every other event and object well, and when we go okay, wait, to the on, question because, again that isn't that what it's, you're sorry, saying that there's on, one only like known no no i'm not what? i'm not I, I feel like you're painting a little bit of a straw man there let me clarify um because and this is why I did the example of red. It's like, I don't think it's special pleading. And I don't think you do either to say that, oh, only things of this certain frequency are red and everything else in the universe of all the other frequencies isn't red. Oh, isn't that special? Like, you know, that's... I'm that's not special that pleading. Specific... That's exactly. not special pleading. I, mean, I already you told you why. That. No, so I, no, that, this is why it's... I, yeah. No, wait, uh, no, let me, I, no, I, I clarify I this. Said, okay. Why did I clarify that's disanalogous? Tell me why. I don't know. Tell me again. Because because red has a, a referent called a frequency that's invariant and still has a, a, a scale in it, and, and, uh, and uh, it has a scale in the frequency, but redness itself is a universal we can point to, so it's not special pleading to say, look, these things that we call red, they associate to this other thing called a frequency in light that reflects things a certain way. What I'm saying is, isn't it the case from your view? Because the... The, the case in your view, is it not the case that you're saying the only known event or object, combination event object, that you are saying exists that's propositional, that you know of, is a proposition itself? Everything else you yeah, know of, of course it's is word, not, right? right? Well, no, but that's, that, like that's asking, the thing. Is everything red, red? Okay, truth app, like, let's say. I, I'll explain to you why. I'll explain to you we'll why. We'll say truth app. Well, no, no, buy, let's change the I, word. I, we'll change... No, you have to answer the question base. I ask you a question. Let's if you don't like the word proposition, fine. Because that's definitional. Let's say truth apt, say every event that happens, it's neither true or false. Every known event or object in the world that we know of, in the universe even. Nothing we see in the external world as an event or an object itself is true or false. Propositions or um or evaluations, let's say. Let's say evaluations, because you don't because evaluation itself, you don't need to state the proposition necessarily. An evaluation is an event, right, in in space and time, a collection of objects. Yes. You're saying an evaluation are you not saying that an evaluation is the only known event object slash object uh, that you know of that that ends up being uh, truth apt or propositional? It's the only known one you know of. Is there any yeah, other I known think, effects mean, of physics? 
to my knowledge, I, other than evaluations, no. So I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think evaluations okay. are special in that regard, but I don't think that's special pleading in the least. It is special. It is special pleading because everything we know through all of our reasoning says events red and objects aren't. Too. No, red is it, red is not special actually because it's inside of a category of light on the light spectrum. So it's not special. It's not special because redness well, is okay, in well, reference wait, wait, wait. to. Hold on, but hold this, on. Let me no, no let me clarify this. No, no. Category... I understand, but based you can't use redness anymore because I just established it's not special because red is in reference to other colors we know, and they all have different uh, descriptive uh, aspects to them. So there's red and blue and all of the colors in the light spectrum we can point to, and we can understand why there, how there's a light spectrum. We can manipulate it. We can talk about it. We can see what the gradient is in between the colors. Okay, yeah, no, I got you. Um, can I respond? So red's not special. Like, I, I got you. You're saying that red's not special because it's just one color in a spectrum, blah, blah, blah. But evaluations are just one activity in a spectrum of activities as well. Like, you can just make the same. You can continue no. the analogy. This is our just rhetorical no. games. No, dude. No. It's not a rhetorical game. I'll, I just corrected you again, right? I'll correct you again why you just made a, di a disanalogous jump. Red is inside of a spectrum something we can observe as a referent, right? It's in relation to other colors. We have a lot of colors we can refer to. So it's not special. Yes, they're unique, but they're still in reference to a system we can look at that maintains its invariance called the light spectrum frequency. It's invariant. We can point to it. We know it's causal. We can man manipulate it. The reason it's disanalogous to jump to, well, why can't there just be one special event in reality that's propositional? The reason is because red, our explanation of red, we use the same explanation to explain blue. That's not the same with events in the world and your jump to propositions because our explanation of events in the world are that they're non, they're non propositional. They're events. They're neither true or false. But there's this one that is. No, I That's not the same as red. Let me explain why you, not. Because, because basically the spectrum of, of activities of which evaluation is, is one subset is like different neural activities and like not all neural activities are evaluations there's other and we use the same exact neurobiology neurochemistry to explain all the rest of the neural activities as we do with evaluations so it is analogous to red and just okay, because great. you're saying well it's red is reducible to one like frequency or whatever one number we can quantify like neural activity is it's, reducible to like physical activities as well. It's I know, but you're just, I know, but you're, you're just granting yourself the capability of it, right? Still, the question is, how is an event, an event inside of a brain, that's an event of physical things in action. How is that event true or false? What is it about the event? It's physicality. You can't just skip to its capability. You have to say, what is it about its physicality, its physical composition and behavior itself that makes it true or false, apt? The pattern. The pattern. The pattern. That's just restating the claim again. We're going to go in a circle again. All right. No, well, if we're going to go in a circle, it's fine. Because you're just claiming the pattern and re reinterpreting what the thing is I'm asking, the event, and you're just calling it a pattern and reasserting that the pattern is what makes it uh, okay, okay, you do a, a true agree. or false. <laughs> but okay you, you'd agree right that there is there are specific patterns of neural activity in the brain for different concepts like apple or purple so if i have one in my brain for apple and purple when i'm looking at a red apple that is false no that's all physical no that's just a reasserting the capability of evaluation that's the thing in question dude you're just giving yourself the evaluation you, you, of but it you don't true even false. think that brains are capable of evaluating that's not what's in question. It's your view you of physicalism. We're not talking. You're said, just wait, no, wait, don't. You said that I was dude, that's a what about that? Dude, I'm not that holding. Do you understand that in, in an internal critique of physicalism, my view is irrelevant to whether I think or how I hold that brains are, are distinct uh, machines that also, uh, you know, are habitually okay, tied cool. to evaluation. Okay. It's, it's irrelevant. I could just hold any view. It doesn't even matter. I could be a star seed right now, Grayson. It doesn't matter. The point is, when I ask you what's distinct about its physicality that makes it different from these other things that are not true or false and can't be true or false, you say it's the pattern. And I go, okay, then what's specific about the pattern itself? What's unique about a pattern of mo molecules that make it suddenly true or false? So there are true patterns you're saying so you're true events 
So you're saying there are true events. There, there are events which reference states of affairs, which can be true or false. So like Again, the, the, so the ev event itself can reference a true state of affairs or a false state uh -huh. of affairs. So what event references that event, that next event though? Because what happens here, Grayson, is that to say that an evaluation is possible is to state that there's a difference between a referent and a reference, correct? Uh, sure. A referent and a reference. If the reference process is itself a referent, then you have to now have a new evaluator evaluate the referent, the new referent. So there's no distinction in your view between, in regards to evaluations and pro uh, propositions, there's no distinction between a referent and a reference. So if premise one, Grayson, is uh, truth statements, uh, or let's say knowledge itself or, or you know acquisition of truth requires a distinction between referent and reference, but in under physicalism, there is no difference between a referent and a reference. Everything's just a referent, an object or event in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then under physicalism, you don't have the preconditions for attaining knowledge or truth because everything's no, no, a referent. No, no, no. Everything's no, a referent. How is everything not a depends, referent? It depends because it depends on what's happening in the activity about what's being referenced and what's referring to is like, okay. It, any, anything can act as either one, but the distinct nature of what's actually going on in your system that you're trying to evaluate, you can see is everything what is under physical what is being referenced. I, I know you're asserting the capability again. I'm asking you a question. Is everything under a physical of physicalist view ultimately a referent? An event? An object it can in space. Be if, that's what, if it's being referred no, 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 to. No, 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 not can be. No, not can be. Is it a consequence, an entailment of physicalism? Is every single thing that happens as an event, including what you're calling references, evaluations, are they all themselves reference? Only if they are being referenced. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not a reference, reference if you're not being referenced. No, dude. Any reference is an activity of physicality in your brain, your, for your, from your view. Every activity... That's including making a reference, right? I'm telling you that the new thing you're calling a reference that's 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 commenting or evaluating on the referent, the, the the object, the event, the other event. I'm saying that new event is now a referent. Is it not? So what? So yeah, what? Sure. So there's I, no distinction. I could be a referent, and yet I can still reference things. No, that's granting yourself capability. I'm saying from your view, there's no distinction between a referent and a reference. I'm not correct? granting myself anything. I you are. We all agree I can reference things. I'm not granting. No, agreeing. Myself any agree, abilities. No, agreeing we can reference things is not the argument because the argument is whether not whether or not we agree. The argument is an internal critique of the entailments of physicalism. So just 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 bear with me. Under physicalism. Is there no real distinction between a referent and a reference? Um, it depends on the actual nature of the activity. Like if you're saying like the nature of look, an activity is an event. People, like, look, 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 let me describe it. Let me describe it. You're saying that Grayson, anybody uh, can Grayson, throw a ball, anybody can catch a ball. But if I if I point to two people throwing a catch, and I can point who he's the catcher, Grayson, the thrower. Grayson is an activity like you, a Jim referent. Bob, you look like a catcher. Gray Grayson, is a, an activity a referent? It can be. You can reference it. So, is that new reference of that referent a new, another referent? Sure. Sure. So, everything's just a referent. That's what, the, my yeah, point. The There's no distinction. You have no distinction. Yeah, like the said, issue is. No, no, the issue is, in order to have knowledge or truth acquisition, you need to have referent and reference if there's no distinction yeah, between reference okay wait I, I i see our difference i see our, dis our our distinction here like i'm saying that something can be a referent in one situation and it can reference other things in other situations it's situational right so i know okay, you're saying so now the you're saying cannot be the reference but i'm saying there, it, in one is there any it can be the reference in one under reference. under physicalism is there any situation or event that's not a referent. Any of them can be at any time. No, all of them necessarily have to be because they're activities and events in the world. 
They can't can yeah, be. They not have being to be. Referenced. If no, a referent. Then how are they a referent? So a referent. So do you maybe do you make a referent? Maybe it's a breakdown in terminology that yeah. I'm not understanding here. But if it's not being referenced currently, then why would yeah. it be a referent? Well, that pretty much ends the possibility of evaluation. If you just admitted my premise one is that for even to have the concept of a referent and a distinction of a referent, you need a mind to do the referencing. Now, if the mind is itself a referent, you don't have a referent, a reference, because Why not? because you have no because because the mind itself ends up being a referent. So that's the end of the physicalist position. Why you my just mind ended it right yourself? Now can be a referent. And it can also reference things. But wait, I'm no, asking you're a, why. My mind right now can be a reference and it can reference things. It's the activity of its referencing things is identical to your mind under your view. It's the same exact object and event in space. You're granting yourself this other thing sure, called yeah. a reference that's not identical to your mind. I just said there's no distinction under your view, view between a referent and a reference. Yet here you are saying, I can have knowledge because I can reference things. And I just said... No, under your view, those things are the same thing. There's no distinction of a reference in your view. There's just a new referent, an activity in space that you you now need another mind that's not the referent to look at and evaluate. Can you? It's the end okay, of the position. Jim Bob, in plain English, in plain English, can you just explain to me why the like the the when I look at the apple and I have the pattern of neural activity for the apple, why is it that that pattern of neural activity for apple is not referencing an apple. What? If the, if you see a pattern view, of an apple, is referencing the apple. The question isn't the method. The no, question no. If, is if, the. If, you're you're no, asking, asking me a question, right? You're asking apple, me a question. Right? I'm asking. Yes, I am. Yes. So I'm asking. You're saying if I see an apple and I have mm -hmm. the distinct pattern of neural activity that that happens in my head whenever I see that apple. If that is later on induced into my head, am I not? Is that not a reference to the apple? Is that like that neural activity That's that happens a, in my head? Is that not referencing the apple? That thing is a referent. That thing you're but calling it is also referencing? referencing the apple. Well, no, the the re the thing that's a referent now needs a new ref reference of that referent. So, if, do you understand? Like, if you import an action, uh, an action, or a set of molecules or objects in a behavior into a brain, right? That yep. thing is now a referent. But what you're saying is, no, that thing's a reference. That's inducing a reference. Well, yes, I'm saying is. whatever it in okay, whatever it induces under the physicalist view is now a new referent that needs to, to be referenced. Do you understand? Like you're 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 just ending the process with no, I have a reference now for the referent. And I'm saying, no, under a physicalist view, the referent, the thing you're calling a reference, that thing, that thing is actually a referent under a physicalist view. It's a new um epiphenomenal physical phenomenon that happened in the brain as physical matter. And so now you need another evaluator to then determine whether your not your reference itself but, is well why can't it be both? Why can't it be both? Because if it's both, like, then you hold on. If it's have, both if it's both, then there's no what? distinction between referent and reference. How could what A equal A and not A? It's a violation of the law of identity. Because because like if you induced like if, if you like saved the neural activity in my head from before when I was seeing the apple and you induced it in my head later, that is referencing the apple. I don't understand how any rational sane person can argue otherwise. Yeah, that's called that's granting like, yourself. In my head, the, yeah, I know you're granting yourself in, the in my head, conclusion. You've, you've referenced you're, the apple. You're granting yourself the conclusion. Are there some people who see an apple and they actually reference a, uh, a, a, a coffee mug? Are there some people? So you're saying it was like a mistake and like I accidentally referenced it. But you're saying a, re a reference still occurred in the brain, a reference to coffee mug. So you're still saying that the physical brain activity can reference things. This time, it's just the incorrect thing. I'm saying that if you hold a position where there's no distinction between a referent and a reference, you don't have the methodology to make evaluations because the evaluation itself is a new object event phenomenon in space and time as matter that then needs to be referenced again you gotta reference it again now but i just gave you now 
I just gave you a distinct example that so With far a conclusion. I have not heard you refute for the I actual did refute activity, it. The activity yeah, you came to a pattern in my brain. The activity of act, wait, 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 wait. The activity of pattern in my brain that corresponds to Apple is both a reference to Apple's and a new reference itself. It's both. They're not yeah. mutually so, exclusive. That's great. So it, the new reference that you're calling a referent also called that's an Apple. Is that correct? A conclusion about the, the actual the, pattern of of move of molecular movement in my brain. Right. Yeah. The pattern of that molecular movement in your break is a conclusion, right? That's an apple. It doesn't right? have to be a conclusion. It just represents the concept of apple. Okay. There's an activity in the brain that induces a reference to some, something external called an apple, right? And that happened as an event, right? Uh, wait, wait. The activity is the reference. Yes. Yeah. The activity is a reference. Okay. So there's something that triggered a... A, a neurological phenomenon that you're calling a reference that's referring to this concept of an apple in the external world. That's what's happening. That's a new event now, right? Yeah. Okay. So if that's a new event, what's the thing that's referencing that as a new event? What's the thing that's referencing that as a new event? Like me right now yeah. referencing it. What do you mean? No, you, this is, this is exactly where I wanted you. You yourself, there's now you've granted yourself another evaluator that's independent of the event. That case closed. That's all I needed from you. So what? So <laughs> what? Why, why the, yeah, so what? If you say so what, that's fine if you say so what. I, I, I invite you, I'm not going to go back into it. I invite you to re-listen to this and especially at this end part because I distinguish for you that there's an event in space and time that called an apple. And then you, from your view, there's a neurological phenomenon that references that, that, that apple as an apple. And that itself is an event. And I asked you, okay, you have a phenomenal event in the brain. I asked you, well, now what's referencing that event? And you said, me. As if you are distinct yeah. than, uh, from a referent or another event. Think about that. I mean, I don't. It, I can't take you any yeah, further down another, this line. I am another event. <laughs> no, you. There's well, yeah, no I you. Am there's event. just a mechanism. No, I'm there's saying. just no. There's no you called Grayson evaluating the other event. There's just the brain as a mechanism producing epiphenomenal effects of physics in the brain. Yeah, yeah. But and, and when I ask you what the evaluator what is of those events. There's no you in this in in physicalism. No, There's just, no you there. You're just describing what I am. Like I am a physical pattern of activity being generated by my brain. You're an it. Yeah, you're an it. You're an event. So what's the thing evaluating? It no, evaluates I'm not an it. it. I'm, oh, wait, <laughs> you wait, are. wait, 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 wait. You Jim are Bob, under Jim physicalism. Bob, I'm not an it. I'm uh, no. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a man. And that <laughs> you're an event. Gender identity is also. That gender identity is also generated in my brain and is a physical pattern of molecular movement as well. So how do you know it's true? And guess what? It's a distinct. How do you know it's true? It's a distinct pattern. It's a distinct from the neural circuitry of sex. There are two so different you know it's patterns, true? like biologically you know it's true? speaking, physically. Mm -hmm. No, there's not. Speaking. No, you couldn't even define gender yeah, no, for me distinct from Actually, sex. No, I can, I can cite you the studies. I can cite you the neurological What's studies a man? that have shown that the neural circuitry is different between gender and sex. What do you mean? How do you know what a gender is? under that study a, a gender is like defined as that pattern of circuitry in the brain you can see that it's distinct from no that's sex. a pattern gender identity is a no. no gender okay, identity this is, is a social cultural like phenomenon gender that's great a different pattern right right so so you're saying they and did a study know, with if you want to know what a man or a woman is i, I feel like that first of all you should probably already know you're like in your 30s it's it's pretty weird what is it? Be asking that question, but I'm happy to yeah, explain it to you. Don't gaslight it. What's the difference okay. between a, what's a man and a woman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a, a man is a gender that typically corresponds with the sex of male. Is it also not that an adult male? An adult. So how do you know? How do you know when a man yeah, doesn't? How do you know associated. when? A, great. How do you know when it's not associated with the sex? when their gender identity is different than their sex. No, how do you know their gender identity is different than their sex? 
you could ask them, take their word for it. If you really want to be empirical about it, you could do an actual like neurological study. And you could see that actually the brains of trans people are more similar in architecture and activity to the, the brains of the gender they identify with than the sex they were born as. So you, wait, the science hold is on, there. Oh, wait, hold on a second. This is interesting. So there's a man, there's a man, right, who's biologically a, let's say a male in this case, and they go into the, and, the neurological um, test, right? And the, 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 the people testing say, wow, your neurological activity I, um, is, is associated with man, but not male, right? So they have a very feminine brain activity or no, no, ma no, ma can you no man, not male. Um, so you're saying that they have the gender identity of a man? No, in this neurological study, based on what you said, it, it could be the case. It's logically possible for a, ma a biological male to go in and they say, wow, your biological activity doesn't align with male. It actually aligns with man. Right? That's possible, logically. Uh, well, that would be a category error. You're confusing no, it's not. sex and gender. Those are two different categories. No, no, I'm actually making the distinction. I'm not confusing it. I'm actually going by your own logic. I made a distinction okay, between yeah, no, man and male. Okay. <laughs> Jim Bob, I, I'm pretty sure you're cisgendered. I'm cisgendered. My gender is man and my sex is male. They're, so there you go. They're, they're the How do you know your they gender match. is man? Because I feel my gender identity. Like, how do you know you're a man you just says the identity that you have that you feel you like manly stuff uh no can't like women can't female can't like women like can't I like women I, I, wait, in social on. jim bob i'll explain to you can women like manly stuff i'll explain Grayson? to you jim bob in, in social <laughs> they can yes in, in okay so that's not a good distinction dude i like to be treated as a man i like to feel manly i like manly things it's not just one or two things it's a compilation a list of a bunch of what different is, things, just like what are those things? Secondary sex characteristics involved. Uh -huh. There's yeah. appearances, like I just said, uh -huh. I was listing them off just now. Yeah, but it's, okay, it's can like I, a combination of your your appearance, your your presentation, the okay, way you great. act. Your can I ask you a question, the Grayson? Social role Grayson, you want to, Grayson? Okay, what? Can I ask you a question? If I'm born as a biological man, and I identify as a, uh, a male? biological male, yeah, yeah. If I was born as a biological male, but I identify as a man, am I trans? No. What? Why not? You're cis. What do you mean? If you're born as a male and you identify as a man, you are cis. Uh -huh. Okay. Cis Can a... You're not okay. Trans. Okay. So, so why am I cis if you're, uh, if you're equating man and, and male? I'm not equating you can't equate them. Those things. Again, man, man is... The gender that's typically associated with the sex male so what is a that's man not that's equating. not tip yeah but what's a man not typically associated with male then is that still a man yeah it's still a man it's just a trans man it's a man <laughs> no, no, no. who was born <laughs> biologically no, no. female no hold on a second you're saying a man is something typically associated with a male right a man is can a gender a, typically associated with someone who's sex can a, male. Great. Can a man in another culture be typically associated to a female biologically? Can a male, like, can a man, a man gender be typically, be is it typically possible for a culture? with a female? Sure. There could be yeah. a culture where all of the biological females are treated masculine and all of the biological okay. males are treated feminine it'd be a very great. weird culture but sure it's possible great so so if a male is not identical to you a man some weird hypotheticals dude no i don't no no these are actually good hypotheticals yes, here's what here's no, why these they're are very here's, weird questions Jimbo. saying they're weird is not a refutation and it doesn't actually uh, deal no, with not, the, the it's logical a, problems uh, it's just an observation bro it's just an observation okay. it's just weird questions man i've never well, thought no, about they're good questions about weird hypothetical no, no, it's, cultures it's gender, well no like, no like how is fiction. it hey base how is it weird if your definition of a man is based on culture bro that ain't weird like the definition of man being based on culture is normal. Okay, That's not great. Weird. Okay, it's great. Based. Based. Like some based, weird made up culture. Based. 
based. Yeah, yeah. If it's not weird, right? If it, Just if you're, Grayson, dude. <laughs> dude, Grayson, Grayson, if your statement is that a, a man or a woman is defined by culture, I don't know how it's weird for me to ask, well, then is it possible for a culture to develop uh, a, a gender that's called man that's typically associated with females? I mean, it's a fair question. How is that a Bro, weird question? if you question? do not see that as a weird question, I can, you're beyond help. If you can't see why that's weird, really? we can just move on. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, dude, okay it's weird. weird. Be, well, be, it's I don't think it's weird because if it's logically consistent it's with your definition question, of a man. man. That's all. Great. So, okay, so when what distinguishes a man from a male then, if it's typically associated from a man, but it's not identical? What's the distinction? Like male is primary sex characteristics and and man is typically associated with secondary sex characteristics as well as social and cultural aspects, as well as psychological aspects about your own identity. So what's a typical social uh, characteristic that's not uh, derivative of a sexual characteristic? Like the like wearing a skirt. A skirt. And that's associated. Yeah, with I mean, what? like if you were looking. If you were looking purely biologically, it would make more functional sense for men to wear skirts because obviously we've got a package there. We got it's it's better like makes more sense for us to wear skirts, but we don't because culturally, socially, like skirts are seen as feminine. Okay. So so the, the I'm asking the question though, like what is it about a man? What's definitionally different about a man? Uh, from from a male if the things the traits you're listing are habitually assigned and associated to male what's one well let's put it this way what's one thing a man has that's not connected to a male what a male has what's one like attribute or characteristics traits. like what name one thing that a man yeah, that's, that's distinct traits. like what like what I just listed one based on appearance. Like, like wearing, wearing a skirt skirts is one aspect. There's no a one woman. There's no one a woman could wear a skirt thing that can make you a man, dude. Yeah, what? I, okay, again, so, I'm in the middle of my explanation here, Jim Bob. I'm uh, in the middle of yeah, but my explanation, you're not answering. But I, was just, I was just. I was no, no. I was just answering and explaining that one single trait does not make you a man or a woman. But I didn't ask if like, one does. Look, look, basically, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. I like, didn't. I didn't ask time if someone's a man or a woman. Grayson, Grayson, I didn't ask if there's one. I asked you to list one. I didn't say that that's the only one. I said list one. You said wearing a skirt. I said, can a woman wear a skirt? Yeah, obviously. Okay, so if there's a woman who's not identical to a female and a man who's not identical to a male and they both wear skirts, that's not a defining... Uh, attribute or characteristic that distinguishes a man from a male or a man from a woman. So is there another no, one you have? No. Okay. So again, I literally just answered this by just describing that what? it's a characteristic suite of traits. For example, like what? with secondary sex characteristics, right? I'm uh, literally in the middle of my explanation, Jim Bob. I just asked you what, dude? You can have, you can have, I'm literally in the middle of explaining it. Just man. name you one, dude. Shoulders. That's viewed as a man. I'm literally in the middle of it. You keep interrupting. You can have very wide shoulders that's seen as masculine, but there can be women that have wide shoulders. So you need more than just one trait. You need a suite of characteristics. Is that not obvious and straightforward to you? That shouldn't make sense. No. You should be able to understand that. No, 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 no. You're actually making my point for me. You're saying all of these characteristics could be shared by man, woman, male, female, Anyway, they could be overlapping. So I'm asking for the distinguishing yeah. characteristic, not the shared characteristic. I'm saying, what is the sh what is the there's distinguishing? Not, bro, it's bimodal. So okay, if it's bimodal, there's that means not, there's distinguishing. There's not bimodal? one distinguishing characteristic. Uh, okay, so if they're bimodal, what are the two extremes yeah, of the binary, bimodal? It's not binary either or. It's bimodal. It's on a spectrum. If it's there if it's bimodal, people in, dude, on the spectrum. listen to me. If it's bimodal, what are the two extremes of the bimodal? Man, woman, and then in between, like the the whole like bimodally distributed spectrum. Great. So you, I just asked you, what's the distinguishing factor that distinguishes a man from a male, and a woman from a female? And you said it's bimodal, right? There's not a single one. And I asked you, well, what's the what's the yeah. um what's the spec what's the end the polars of the two opposite of the bimodal? You said man and woman. By saying yep. man and woman, Grayson, you're actually 
now asserting again that there's a distinction called man and women that has that that establishes two ends of a bimodal distribution. So I'm going to ask you, sure. if you how want do you distinct- distinguish there? If you want it, what's the I distinction? Can tell you the easiest way. The easiest way is just what is their gender identity? If they identify as male, or if they identify as man, they're man. If they identify as woman, they're woman. Okay, so the distinguishing the factor is self just, so you know, just to clarify. No, just I want to clarify something here. Yeah. Gender yeah. identity is a neural activity in the brain that is a physical thing going on. We know where gender identity is generated in the brain, what circuits and everything. So it's okay. not like it's just like Grayson. Some, Grayson, let me you know, Grayson. Stuff where it's totally I got arbitrary. it. Stop prattling. Stop prattling for a second. If the distinct if the distinguishing factor between man and woman is self internal proclamation that you're just proclaiming it so, and that's the distinguishing factor, you no longer have a bi- bimodal distribution because it's completely arbitrary and internally created. No, because there are people that like whose gender identity is more like Great. towards one end of the spectrum or Grayson, the middle of the spectrum Grayson, or whatever. It's can still I, a spectrum. It's still Gra- Grayson? Okay, Grayson. If the bimodal extremes is man and woman, can I identify and proclaim that I'm a man, but end up by your standard on the far left side of of a woman of the of the bimodal? No. I can't. No, not so really. if I say I'm a man, I have to exist on the on the man side, even though it's completely made up. What do you mean it's completely made up? The bimodal distribution, man on one side. Hold, dude, listen. The bimodal you just stated exists is man on one side of the polar opposite and then the other polar opposite is woman. I ask you what distinguishes that one from the other. You said it's all declared internally by the person to declare themselves what they feel like, right? Well, if that's the standard, I don't know. If I, would I could, just, I would not I could, really say it like that. So then, what's like the standard word. then? How do you determine the bimodal then? It's gender identity is generated in the brain. It's not like a. You so it's really arbitrary. It. It's, that's the same thing under your arbitrary. view, dude. Just, yeah, it is. No, it, that you doesn't make it arbitrary. No. Okay, so if it's generated in the brain, like, if I stated I'm a woman, you could look in my brain and tell me I'm not. Yeah, you could see whether oh, or really? not, like, you're oh, really? serious or if you're lying. Yeah. Oh, really? You could see that in yeah, my brain, lying, right? <laughs> lying has distinct, lying, lying has distinct patterns of neural activity. Like, how yeah, could I be lying patterns. if the distinction is uh, I'm making it up? There's no distinction of the truth of the matter if it's just made up. So, based on your theory, right? For the that- vast majority. For the vast, vast majority. Maybe it could be some crazy freak exception, but for the vast majority of people that genuinely have a trans identity. You can Uh see in their brains, in their circuits that are currently generating their gender identity, Uh you can see that it more aligns with the gender they identify with than the sex they were born as. How do you you identify with a gender that you make up, you declare yourself? You don't make it up. You just said you could see in their brain that they identify with a social construct. If the social construct is made up, why are they identifying with something that doesn't exist externally? People identify with stuff that doesn't exist externally all the time. What are, what are you talking about? You're a Christian. Yeah, that's an identity yeah, what, with something yeah, what, that's like a... Like a so you're saying it's thing. a delusion. So you're saying it's delusion then. No, it's generated by the brain. That doesn't mean it's de facto a delusion. My vision is generated by the brain too, but it's not like delusional. I can still see objects. Okay, so the spectrum of man and woman, as you said, is the bimodal distribution of people's gender. And you're saying, I can't declare myself a man and end up descriptively on the woman's side. Um, no, because your identity would be part of that description and that's pretty overruling of the other stuff. Great. What's the other stuff that you would distinguish whether or not it's, it's, uh, incompatible? Secondary sex characteristics, behaviors, like social uh, norms, activities, roles, stuff like that. Okay. What, what would be one norm that ends up on the man side and one that ends up on the woman side? 
Um, I mean, most of them would probably have to do with like stereotypical gender roles, expectations, behaviors, stuff like that. People are pretty familiar with like, you know, stereotypical okay. gender roles. Great. And okay. So, so if I'm a man, uh, identify as a man in, in American culture and I fly to another country, yeah. I'm no longer a man in that country, right? If it doesn't match. What? No. No, dude. right. I, I just am I still a man? Your gender identity is generated in your brain. It can be influenced no, by the if, culture around dude. you, dude. But if you're a freaking grown adult and you go to a different country, your gender identity in your brain is Grayson, not going to be changed. Grayson, Grayson, if the thing you're identifying in your brain is referencing culture, right? I'm a man. I'm a yeah, woman. What are culture, you referencing? The one you grew up. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. No shit. So if I grew up in a culture and I identify as the uh, a gender that's not identical to my sex. If I go to another country that doesn't have that same bimodal distribution of descriptions of genders, am I still a man in that country? You're a man in your head. I don't know. In my about own that world. In my own world, right? Okay, if but that, no, look. If, no, no, if, Grayson, if, wait, 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 wait. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I'll engage with the hypothetical. Look. In the other country, if you're like in, in your country, if the gender role of being a man is perceived as a woman in that other country, then yes. Like if you go to that other country, they will perceive you as a woman, even though you will still feel like a man. Great. Okay, good. So is that called is that would that be transphobic if a country did that? If the standard that you just posed posed gr only grounds the definition of man and women based on culture anyway? No, it wouldn't be if a country does that because there's no because there's no trans people in the situation involved at all. Okay, whatever you whatever it's called, you you're not a, you're not affirming my pronouns. That kind of stuff could have from your view. If it's the case that gender itself and its bimodal distribution is completely sure. okay, informed yeah, by culture, look, look then it would be, yeah, no, uh, look, let me clarify. Okay, it would yeah. be misgendering me, but it's not transphobic because I'm not trans. I understand. I changed the T word to affirming pronouns or something. The point is, if someone says you're denying that I'm a sure, man yeah, and I really be, feel it like it, it would not be affirming my pronouns. You'd be misgendering me. No, I wouldn't yeah, it, be because be you're in another country, me, dude. Pronouns, whatever, all that stuff. So in another country, you would no, still it be it doing would be. that. If my pronouns are he, him, and they're not affirming that, it would be. It's just you know, you're saying it's a cultural. Misgendering. No, you're okay, saying no, you're it's saying it's a no, you're saying no, dude, it's not misgendering by your own standard, dude. Do you understand this? Let me do it again. If gender, man and 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 woman is defined culturally inside a culture, that that these yeah. things are determined by the culture, right? And someone affirms in my their culture, one or be misgendering in their culture dude, it would not be. Great, that's all I needed to know. Therefore, if you go into another country, the entire concept of man and woman, from your view, j uh, shows up to be completely illusory, totally made up. Sure. Well, it is. It is sure. a social construct, Jimbo. So social construct, right? So now, is it a social construct yeah. for the co the country? Let's say it's a primarily traditional country, right? That's that holds a that holds a view of of man and woman to say that the cultural construct is that the culture holds that man means identical to uh, to male, right? That could be a social construct, right? Sure. Yes. So if that's the dominant social construct, and you have a minority asking us to abandon our social construct that uh, equates man with male and the expectation is of woman with female that is to say when you go out searching for a female mate the expectation socially is procreation potentially um, a whole set of new behaviors how people act from your own view if a country yeah okay like america, i get where you're going with it okay if a country like america is predom predominantly holds a cultural uh, cultural um, construct that yeah, equates man and okay you got it so on what basis should we change that if it's the dominant one if something is empirically true or not so if, for example like I just said like you just said I it's a construct it's not empirically it's, true I know you just said just, it's a construct let me just say something uninterrupted for one second here I cited a study which shows empirically that sex and gender are two different things 
It's just like if you had a culture that said that dolphins are sharks, that's part of our culture. But like a small minority said actually dolphins are mammals and they have empirical evidence explaining why not. Then yes, that culture should change Grayson. because there's empirical evidence to the contrary. Grayson, Grayson, okay. Okay, I'll go back to my other hypothetical then. I go to the neurological why? doctor, you're whoever. No, you don't I'm actually. What I just said. No, what are you talking about? I'm going to address it right now. I'm going to debunk it right now. Listen, Good based job. on what you just said, based on what you said, empirical, right? Empirical data. If gender is a construct, right? If I go into the neuro, the, the neurological doctor, and they say, "See, we found it. You're, you know, you're. We're looking at the the uh, relationship between your gender and your your sex or whatever, right? You just admitted that that person, if he goes to another country, and the gender roles are completely different, and what's expected of you is totally different. You you admitted that that person's no longer a man just because they identify in one country and culture as a man. But now you're going, you're contradicting yourself. You're saying it's actually found in the brain. Right. That means that when you go into another country, Bro, right, you when are, you bit the you bullet, are really quote mining me right now. You, you listen are to me. No, no, stop. Me, stop coping. Said, right. Bro, look, stop you're, coping. You're misquoting. Me. You're coping hard you're right now. You're misquoting me. Let me clarify what I. I'm not. You. You bit no, the I'm bullet and said that me. you bit the bullet and you said, said no, no. You no, said that that person's no longer a man, dude. To let me clarify what I actually said. Go ahead, dude. You are so afraid to let me clarify my own. No, do it. I'm waiting for you, dude. I had said is that. It, what I had said is that in that country, you're no longer a man. However, to you, you are still a man because your brain is still gender it, ge generating a man identity. Uh, so stop I right there. No, if that's, no there is a contradiction. Brain. Yeah, you, there is. Because well, say it again, Grayson. Say it again. What in, you said was what? In that foreign country, mm -hmm. in that foreign country, for that foreign country, to those people mm -hmm. in that foreign country, you are not yeah. a man. However, Great. to you... You are a man because your brain is generating the man identity. Great. So how is it that the other country can't look at the neurology and say, no, in fact, it's true. You are a man. They can. If they were, in, if they were actually in, like, skilled enough scientifically, they could. So that means your first statement, which is if a, man, if a woman, if a female identifies as a man in one country... And then moves and moves to another country, and those social norms don't match up. You just said yourself they're not a man in that country, and yet now you're saying in premise two that empirically they would be if they just looked at the brain. And yet oh, your wow. standard. You mean you mean yeah. you mean terms and concepts can have different connotations in different countries? No way, Jim Bob. This is pioneering new ground here. You're breaking. Uh, no, it's the the entailment of your position is that if that other country looked in the brain, then they would in fact show that yeah. they were a man, right? If they even though the cultures even country, though the cultures are different, if, right? If that other country, <laughs> uh, let me explain, Jim Bob. If that other country has a different identity of man, and they looked in that person's brain, they would see that in that person's brain they were generating the gender identity of man from their country of origin. And that could look oh, different really? than the gener than the identity oh, of a really? man. Oh really? Oh really? Oh the country, country of origin? Of, oh you that. <laughs> fuck, dude! You can find the country of origin in the brain. This is wild. This is, must be a new neurological breakthrough. Hey, you want a piece of this guy? Uh, that information BBF? would obviously be in the brain. I, to I would. I would like sensitive enough. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I would like to discuss this with you. Um, I think I can change your mind. We can have a good faith exchange. Um, if that if that's okay with you, I'll give you plenty of speaking time. And I just uh, asked for uh, for Jim Bob to moderate fairly while we have this discussion. Is that is that all right with you, sir? Um, this is Andrew, right? Yeah. Okay, so you know who I am, right? You know I don't. I'm not your biggest fan, but I would be down to have a discussion depending on what the topic is. If we could stay to that topic. Well, it's going to be this. It's going to be this topic. So I'd, I'd like to get into the, this these ideas that you have on gender and sex. So, oh, okay, um, okay. so let's, so let's, uh, so let's, so let's do that if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Can, um, you, can you email me or, uh, Jim Bob? No, no, no. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Let's just do it right now. So, <laughs> okay. so it'll be 10 so minutes. It'll be 10 minutes. Yeah. 10, 10 minutes. Just so, so I, you I, know, I just, my battery mm -hmm. is at 24%, but I will try to find oh, a place to plug in right now. All right. Well, 24% ain't, ain't that low. Um, yeah. So, so, so let's, so let's dive into this. Um, my first question to you is, 
Uh, let's see if we can, un well, first, let's see if we can untangle two concepts, and then I'll ask my first question. Concept one is a product of the mind, which is not real. That's concept one. And then a reality or truth of the matter, which is concept two. Would you agree with me that if I claimed that I was the king of France, that that could be true in my head, but would you say that that would be true in reality? Yeah, obviously not. Okay, what would make it not true in reality? You don't have any of the defining <laughs> necessary criteria that be sufficient to make you the king of France. That seems that seems totally reasonable to me. And so, like, what what are some of those characteristics that would make me the the uh, king of France? What would what would that entail? I don't know. I'm, I assume that there's some kind of official paperwork involved. Well, and, and probably I give orders and people follow the orders and I'm in charge of the country and all of that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Now, if I were to make the claim that I was a female, uh, would the fact of the matter reflect that I was a female? Is there any biological information about you? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm X, X Y chromosome. I have gonads. I'm uh, by all biological metrics a male. So if I okay, claim well, that I was a all female, biological metrics. Mm -hmm. If by all biological metrics, then you're a male. Then if you say mm -hmm. you're a female, then that would not be true. <laughs> okay, so then I just have to ask this one question: If I claimed I was a woman, and what woman meant was adult female, what would make that statement true? What do you mean? What would make that statement true? Like, what if, would make the statement true? Woman and and woman it, was referring to female sex. Uh, yeah, it was referring to adult female. What would make that statement yeah. true? Your primary sex characteristics matching those of female. Okay, so so as a male, if I say that I am a woman, by my definition, that would be a false statement. Correct. Um, if you're defining woman as sex instead of gender, then yes. Yes. Okay. So gender, you agree with me as a construction of the mind, right? Does not yeah, exist like in brain, material reality. The, it exists as a construction of well, the mind. I'm not sure how long you've been listening to this conversation. We've been going on for a while, but I am a physicalist. I do think that there like is a physical activity going on for most like mental activities, thoughts, concepts, that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. It did, but in the same way that if I said I was the king of France, you've already agreed with me that that could not yeah, be yeah, true okay, so, in material reality. So you can. So you can. So I hang on. I, in my mind, wait, 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 so wait, wait, I just want. Wait, wait. I want to make clarify, sure we can agree on this. This quick point. This quick point. I think we can. I want to make sure we can clarify. clarify. Okay. Let me okay. clarify. Like your brain can generate the false identity that you're the king of France. Your brain Correct. can also ident generate your gender identity. Like all of us have. At yeah. Least, right. But what would make that, but what would make that true? What would make that true though? What would make it true? Like your gender. What identity? would make the gender like, identity? Gender identity if, you say, so if you say, yeah, if you say I'm a woman, right. If, if you say in reality, you can in your mind be the king of France, which I don't disagree with. But in material reality, you cannot be because it doesn't match the criteria for what the king of France is. Then utilizing yeah, your yeah, same gotcha, logic, gotcha. why is it that I, if I claim that my gender is X and I am the real X thing, why would that be true? Yeah, yeah. No, I got, I'll go ahead and asking. So I think that you can be, like if you make a statement, I am male, I am female, you're making a statement about set your sex, that statement can be true or false. But if you're making a statement about your gender identity and you're like, you're not lying about it, like you're, you're, you're genuinely saying the genuine product of your brain, I don't think that that statement can be true or false because it's like saying like, you know. Well, then how come the, the king of France, then how come the king of France, wait, then why can the king of France statement be true or false? Because the king of France designation is not a social designation based on yeah, it's totally like a social identity, designation based it, it's not yes it's a it's a complete social designation based on identity absolutely mm -hmm. right right when you don't let me finish my sentence 
Okay, let's let him finish. Go ahead. What were you gonna bro, say, bro? I I didn't I didn't cut you off. I just clarified. I was so go ahead. France simply because you declare that you are the king of France. That's not how right. that identity works. That, that that identity has to be bestowed <laughs> upon you by the proper authorities, right? No, you can take it. No, nope, you can take it. You can just take that identity. Take like what? you can you can just you can just strong arm France and become the king of France. Like it doesn't have to be bestowed upon you. <laughs> People can even oh, disagree okay, okay. with you, so right? You, they can you even say a, that okay, you're not. Come on, you're resorting to absurdity now. You're, you're saying if you have no, a, how, wait, 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 wait. Hey, can you explain? Wait, why would that be absurd? We're talking about identity. Oh, come here. on, D uh, come on, some argument. No, I don't. Base, I don't know base, if hold on, hold on, BPF, hold on. Hold on. Hey, hey, Grayson, Grayson, can you tell us how it's logically absurd, not just that yeah, you think it's weird? Yeah, what, what's wrong with it? Okay, I don't understand. Okay. Seems like can you tell us how it's logically? Can you tell us how it's logically? Can you tell us how it's logically absurd? Pedantic. I'm being no, that's what absurd means in a debate. Absurd, that's happy. what. Okay, I'm just clarifying. Hang on, we can move past it. We can move past it. I just the thing is, the thing is, is that if we're talking about my balls about every little no problem, no problem, no problem. But if we're talking about the idea, yeah, of the mind, go ahead. Why I think it's absurd is because we're talking about what makes you the king of France, or and I'm saying it's, it's not mm -hmm. based on your own self identity, and and your your comeback to that was like, well, sure, like if you feel like the king of France and you have an army of six million people at your disposal, you can make yourself the king of France, <laughs> sure. But again, what yeah, made you the but, king but, of France is not your self identity. Mm -hmm. What made you the king of France was that you took it by conquest. So it, or, it is, or that it was bestowed the case on you, that right? Your own self identity makes you the king of France. But it yeah, is or it case. was bestowed. And like, hang on, hang on. Definitionally, bro, bro one point at a time. One let's point, yeah, one this. point at a time. One point. Just let's stay with this. All right, all right. Okay, is it so? If it's bestowed upon you, this means other people recognize you as this thing, right? Yes. Okay. So what happens? Right so what happens? Right. Yeah. So what happens if those people? Uh, Andrew, say that again. You cut out. Andrew, um, I, Andrew I, say it again. Anyway, what say what it. happens? Yeah, what what happens if people do not recognize you as being this thing? Are you that thing? Are you the king of France if people don't recognize you as the king of France, regardless of your self identity so of believing you're the king of France? So it depends on the nature of the category in question. For the king of right. France, no, but for gender, mm -hmm. yes. Just like for your Why? favorite music, or if what I would be the distinction? Myself a fan. If I consider myself a fan of the of the band Gorillaz, but I've never been to their concerts, mm -hmm. I've never bought their albums or whatever, but I consider myself a Gorillaz fan, and you say, well, mm -hmm. like, you know, how how can I know that you're really a Gorillaz fan if you've never, you don't have any receipts, you never bought any of their music or whatever, but it's an identity of mine. It's not that other people can tell me I'm not a Gorillaz fan. It's <laughs> your own self-identity that is sufficient to categorize you as a fan of a certain music musician or so band. What would, okay, fair gender. enough. So what would make you, so what would make you a Gorillaz fan? If I consider myself one, e even if I listen to all their music or I don't, if I okay, consider so myself what, how a Gorillaz fan, you, then I am Sure, one. sure. So how would you consider somebody else to be a Gorillaz fan? Basically, like, you could try to gatekeep it and say you're not a real Gorillaz fan if you haven't done X, Y, and Z. Or you could just take them mm -hmm. at their word if they tell you. Yeah, but what would actually make them a Gorillaz fan is my question. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to convey something there definitionally with fan, right? There's something entailed there. There's yeah. some some activities or something that I, they I must be doing. That, um, like for instance, if I said I was a fan, if I said a fan, I wouldn't even say so because, like, for yeah, really? example, like this so is, does example, it even make sense if I were to say to you? Let me, get, if let me I, just give one quick just, one. Okay, yeah, let me ahead, give, Andrew, let you can, you can give your example, but let me give one quick one first. Yeah, there can even be a fan that says, you know, I like really really hate gorillas music you know I, I really hate even listening to it but i'm still a fan i still am looking forward to what their next album could be like you know that you could even hate <laughs> okay. the music and still consider yourself a fan and it would so be if i were to say that i was a stephen king fan but never read a single stephen king book never never listened to a single thing he said never watched a single movie and somebody else called me a liar would you agree with him I would say you're a weird fan, but if you're a Stephen King's fan just based off vibes alone, that, sure, that's valid, dude. Whatever. I wouldn't really care. You know, I'm not going to gatekeep you whether or not you're a fan. Yeah, but what would make the person, what would make them, the person calling them a liar wrong? If the other person does consider themselves to be a fan of Stephen King? Uh huh. Yeah. What would make them wrong? 
Okay, so it, it sounds like you've just been basically defeated by analogy at this point. What would make them wrong? I just told you, if the other person doesn't identify as a fan of Stephen King, then they No, 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 no. That's not my question. My question was no, the no, person no, 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 who that calls, doesn't agree with your fucking The person oh, who no. calls them the person who calls them a liar, what makes them wrong? Yeah. Um I'm sorry, you might have cut off at the end. You said the person that what, the person makes sense, who calls them a liar. So if I'm if I if I'm a Stephen King fan, I read all the books, I watch all the movies, all this, somebody else does none of that, calls themselves a Stephen King yeah. fan, I call them a liar. What makes yeah. my statement that they're a liar untrue? The fact that the other person identifies as a Stephen King fan. Okay, like, well then the, the fact the, that the, the other person that, identifies that, wait, wait, as the King this, of France. Andrew, let me explain this. You said I was going to have time okay. to explain. The, the, the criteria that is sufficient uh -huh. to categorize somebody uh -huh. as a fan of Stephen King is whether uh -huh. or not they identify as a fan of Stephen King. That's the only necessary criteria. <laughs> Why is that the only necessary criteria? That's just definitionally what makes you a fan of something is whether no. or not you can Okay, well then, then show, me, show me the definition which states that. All right, man. I'll go go hunt down a dictionary for the word "fan" over here. Fifteen percent. Well, I mean, what is what? Well, what time. what is well? What does "fan" convey? Doesn't it? Aren't, aren't you trying to equate some information there? Sure, but uh, as I already pointed out, you can even hate the music and still consider yourself to be a fan of them. Yeah, but don't we falsify claims by if if the claim doesn't reach the threshold for the criteria of the thing we're pointing to, then the claim is false. Yeah. So if fan exactly. is indicating, if exactly. fan is indicating, stop, stop, bro. I just let you go. On, stop talking, let, bro. Let him go, Grace. My turn. My turn. I just got done explaining this to you, but I'm going to do it again. So, so if that's the way that you falsify a claim, okay, if, if fan just means anybody who identifies as a fan, then how can fan mean anything? Because I can just identify as being a fan of whatever. And anybody can identify as, oh, well, you can almost make any claim as just a, a form of self-ID, and then it becomes unfalsifiable. So, for instance, you could never say somebody was a fake Christian. You could never say that somebody well, was a fake, sat uh, a fake Satan worshiper. How could you ever uh -huh. do that? It becomes circular. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, boo-hoo, I took away your ability to gatekeep other people's identities? Oh, no. no well, no, you took, you took away the yet, ability for words to mean stuff. Wait, 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 wait. It, no. it, wait, I let you go here. It is arbitrary what people are fans mm -hmm. of. You can, people say fans of stupid stuff all the time. I'm a fan of mustard. I'm a fan of this door handle. Whatever. Like, yeah, that's all mm -hmm. true. They can. Yeah, but what are they conveying there? But like, but they're conveying but they're conveying something there. Yeah, it they're, means they're that making... they probably like those things. But even if they yeah, dislike exactly. them, they can still consider <laughs> exactly. them a fan. Right, but so but how could you be a yeah, how could you be a category. fan? It's an so, arbitrary so me, categorization. Well, okay. Then how could you be a fan of the taste of mustard if you've never tasted mustard? I don't know. Maybe you could be a fan of how it's described. You don't know? You, you don't know how you could be a fan dude, I, of I mustard if I you've never tasted mustard. 13% <laughs> battery left. Is this really one of how you spend the company? Okay, Andrew, yeah. like, Andrew I want to... An analogy and you're Grayson, asking me about Grayson, mustard. Grayson, Grayson. <laughs> Grayson, hold on, let's go back to the question that I think is, is really important here. Is Andrew asked, how could you say the person who says, no, you're not a fan, how could they be lying, right? Because your distinction here is that there I, is I no real distinction of a time. fan. So what is the answer again? How do you know, how could you say the person's lying when they say, no, you're not a fan? How do you know, how do you know they're lying? How do you know they're wrong? They are wrong. If they say the other person's not a fan, they are wrong if the other person identifies as a fan. <laughs> Well, then you have just then you have just defeated your entire worldview, yeah. and this is what I was getting at, right? So this your whole worldview is now destroyed because if all a sports fan is somebody who identifies as being one, that makes everybody a gatekeeper of what one is. So it's impossible to say one person's lying about the other one being a fan because their own definition of whatever it is has to be true. Therefore, if you say you're not a woman based on my criteria of a woman, there's no fucking way for you to call me a liar. We can take this one more thing, Grayson. I want to take this into another more immediate uh, scenario. Let's say, because you say you're a male and you're a cis man, right, Grayson? So let's say there is a, uh, a university that's offering scholarship to wait, wait, wait. women. Before you start that, can I just okay. 
can I respond to what Andrew said really quick? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. yeah if Go ahead. all of us are making, okay. so let yes. me give you the argument. I, let I, me give you the argument. I want to make okay, sure. It's funny that how my response right. to Andrew sounds an awful lot like Andrew. <laughs> like, isn't that weird? I just uh, want to make sure you get the, I just want to make sure you get it right. So I'm just going to repeat it real quick. If the identity of a fan is whatever they claim it is, you cannot call another fan a liar for saying you are not one because, like you said, it is arbitrary. Correct? You can still determine whether or not they're lying. There are other How? physiological, empirical tests about whether or not somebody's lying. Other factors that betray if somebody's telling the truth or not. You can tell if somebody's lying. Physiologically. <coughs> but lies are, okay, but, but lies are based on intent. If they mean it, if they mean you're not a fan, right, they mean that then they're not lying and you can't say that they're lying based on criteria. So yeah, what is actually wrong with them saying you're lying? What is wrong with that? No, ultimately I do think that, you know, it, it's shitty to call people out as saying you're not a real fan. If they say they are a fan. And I think that that's nice, know, but what makes them a lie? You, what what makes think, it a I lie? Think, I think that you, I think that you shouldn't, I think that you shouldn't gatekeep. If people are fans, I think that you shouldn't gatekeep people's own gender. Identity. That's nice. What makes it a lie? What makes it a lie for one fan to tell another fan they're not a real fan? What makes that a lie? Because what designates what what is the sufficient criteria to designate a one as, as a fan, much similar mm -hmm. to gender, is whether or not you identify as a fan. Yeah, sure, but whatever, however you identify like as a fan is going to have over and over again. Hang on, no, we're not, we're not. It's my turn. Hold on, my turn. It's my turn. Hold on, Grayson. It's my turn, Grayson. Bro. Just, just engage. Let him <laughs> so talk. no. No, this is not correct because whatever your identity is, self-identity of fans going to have criteria. If somebody else doesn't meet that criteria and you say it's arbitrary, so you can make up whatever criteria you want. If I say you're not a fan, how could I be lying? How? Because the sufficient criteria is whether or not they identify as a fan. We're going in circles because you don't understand the points I'm making. Well, you want to ask your question because now that's, I'm at that's less totally than that's I, that's totally I, I wanna... incoherent. How the hell does your cell phone in ten minutes lose twelve percent battery? Um, I just want to point out, Grayson. I don't though, know, man, because I'm you... live streaming. I'm in the middle of freaking. I'm in the middle of nowhere, Idaho, right now on a road trip. Yeah, so I just want to make sure I got this clear. You can come up with whatever your definition of fan is, and you are that thing. However, telling somebody else that they're not that thing because they don't meet that definite criteria. You're lying about that. Can you even explain how that's coherent? Yeah, I just did. I've explained Do it, it again. Like Use small words. A fan is a process of their own self-identity as one. So if you, for you to say they're not, when they identify as one, would make you a liar. You should. Just yeah, but you me. identifying not, as a fan about, has about, criteria. Hey, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, how about just how uh -huh. about just generally you don't gatekeep people's identities okay we can call well, it how that. about how about but how about at, how about we do because words because words mean stuff so uh, moving back to this though if if i don't i still don't understand you gotta yeah, explain words it again do mean stuff and sex and if gender you, mean two different things if you say if you say oh no, no one no, at a time no. grayson 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 just just one just over talking and spurging so so again if i identify as a sports fan and my i because i self-id is that thing i am that thing and my criteria for what makes you one is that you go and buy the fans merch. If you say that you're a sports fan, but you don't buy the fans merch. So I say, you're not a sports fan. How in the world could I be wrong? Cause I consider myself a sports fan and that's all that's so required. only, so the only, only the person who makes the ID claim is the person who's in the right. That's it. Yep. So, the, so, so the other criteria yep. then, so there's no, there's no possible way you realize this. This is now you're in a logical contradiction. There's no possible way for yeah. you to ever make a claim based on self ID that the other person is lying or is incorrect, even if your self ID has yeah, the yeah. standards no, for true. what that thing because, is. Because yeah, that's true. Because normal, healthy people don't go around telling other people that they are this and that, and don't go around <laughs> dictating the identities of others. So you shouldn't do that. That's those not are normal. those are all as, those are all assertions. That, that's those are just assertions. So so back to this though. Okay. If I if if, if you if you self ID as a sports fan, and you your claim is that what makes you a sports fan is that you collect memorabilia, and another person does not collect memorabilia. And you say, okay, you're a liar. How could you be wrong if it's based on your self ID? How? 
Well, maybe could, to their definition, you're not a true fan, but they don't well, have a right to your to definition. Be, they're not. not your fan. <laughs> So right, it's arbitrary. So, so, so neither one could be lying. So neither one could be lying. So, so then therefore, Grayson, if, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me finish yeah. this, and then I'm done. I'll, I'll hop the call. So then what we've determined here is that there's no way for you to tell me that I'm lying when I say that a person's not a fucking woman, you idiot. I just wanted to let you know that. And with that, I will dip out. Have a oh, wonderful yeah. day, you stupid fuck. Oh, great. I'm glad that the true colors come out. You tried to be nice, but you just had to get a little bit out at the very end. I see how it is. But uh, Grayson, uh, thanks for entertaining that. If you think that you've that. demonstrated something with that, if you think I, that I think... Andrew's demonstrated something with that about whether or not uh, you can have a true fan, it just sounds like a no true Scotsman fallacy. Well, well no, I, mean, I would say I would just a, for them. Grayson, Grayson, if, if it's the case that the standards are both arbitrary for two different people, then you should just bite the bullet and say, yeah. well, you can't say there, there's no way of saying that they're lying. I mean, that's the way to, to go about it is just say, if there's two standards that are competing, but they're both arbitrary and created as so, social constructs, there really is no standard to tell the person who says, no, you're not a fan to no, say they're, but, they're actually but, lying because they're not actually lying but, from their view. That's is, what Andrew demonstrated. But, no, but they're not actually lying. Person, Bob, like two people, but two people like, one person accurately stating their gender identity and another person like, or the same person like unaccurately stating it are going to have recognizably empirically verifiably different brain states. You could tell okay. who's lying and who's not if you had a sufficiently sensitive instrument. Right, right. Well, that's just appealing to some sort of mystery or ignorance that we don't have the tech for. But let's just say this, Grayson. Someone says, someone's a biological man. They're super muscular. They don't wear women's clothing. They don't present as a woman at all. They identify as a woman. Okay? They just declare it so. Now, are you saying that someone like me, right, um, when, my, when I'm walking my daughter in public and the, she sees what looks like to her as a male who she she identifies categorically as a man dressed in a suit strong wide shoulders has a sports team pin on all the shit you listed as a as a as something that's categorically man oriented when she says daddy look at that man are you saying she's lying no she's just probably mistaken and understandably so and if that person okay. like heard that and said you know actually you know i'm a i identify as a woman then you can it, it depends like if you want to respect other people then you could teach your daughter that and say look like that's how they identify it's a nice thing to do to use those okay. kind of pronouns if that. if if telling my daughter to um identify that nice man other people uh, hold on no if my if i tell my daughter to identify that as a man but that's occurs to her as a lie why should she do it If she wants to be nice and respectful to other people around So them. people should lie for other people's feelings? So what makes their feelings better than the feelings we get for having to lie? Why is one more valuable than the other, Grayson? It just, it just, depends. It just depends on whether or not you want to raise your daughter to be a conscientious person. I, that didn't answer the question. Are they being conscientious of my well, daughter uh, you, forcing you her? Hold on, if Grayson, listen to. to me. Stop interrupting me. I asked you a question. Are they being conscientious of what goes in goes on internally for myself and my daughter and people who think like me to force us to lie, right? I'm asking you a question, Gracie. Why is the feelings of the man who's dressed like a man, who's a biological male, saying, call me a woman, what makes their feelings more important than the internal conflict we experience by lying? Tell me what's distinguishable about the other that makes it more valuable that we bend the knee. Tell me. Look, if if you are in such internal anguish at just the thought of properly using That's an assertion. Pronouns, it doesn't answer really, the question. If that, His phone must have so, died. Oh, deep, Where is he? That, it's such that a doesn't answer the question. You, know what? you can have a special... You can have a little special boy, little hall pass, a little Great. exemption just Great. for Jim Grayson. Bob because he, Grayson. Feels, Grayson. Too, he Grayson. feels just too strongly just having Grayson. to use people's pronouns that they Grayson. want to be identified as. Grayson, can you now swap everything you said about me and make it about the trans person who wants me to speak in a certain way? 
you know, for no, good faith. You're the whiny little snowflake. No, 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 no. At the end of the no, day, the whiny, you're the one. Okay, who's okay, the whiny. whiny. Okay, so asking someone to use uh, pronouns and language that doesn't comport with their internal reality framework that's considered a lie from their ideological and religious standpoint, you're saying they're the whiny ba babies. I asked you kindly to just restate <laughs> yeah. that, but use it for the other person. If are they listen, Grayson, I'll, I'll tell you how it sounds. Are these people so petty and so weak and their internal structure is so broken that they have to force people? And if they don't affirm their their identity, that's internalized only uh, that's granted, that's grounded in nothing but their own mind. Uh, are you saying that they can't live without people affirming their own internal identities? See, here's the difference, Jim Bob, is that what's the difference? Case, I asked for that people first. People like you, I, people I, I like you. I'm, I'm literally going into it. You don't interrupt me. I let you just talk, man. Let me answer here because I only have four percent here. So look, people like you. I'll just make this my conclusion stock statement here. People like you are actually not undergoing all of this internal suffering at just trying to use pronouns that people oh, really? identify as. Really? Whereas trans people, there is actual genuine suffering that trans people go through in society. Gender oh, dysphoria is an actual like mm. terrible amount of suffering that people go to. Right. So if you actually is that is gender dysphoria delusion? Is gender kind towards is gender dysphoria delusional? You, you is gender disrespectful? Okay, great. Pronouns. Grayson and you know Grayson, you I love your speech. I love your speech. Or a bigot about it. I love your speech, sure you but do. is gender dysphoria you a, del a delusion? You called a bigot and an asshole. You is gender like dysphoria? You're you're coping. <laughs> you're coping. Is gender dysphoria a delusion? Oh, I'm coping. Is, is gender, gender dysphoria, dysphoria a delusion? delusion? I don't know, man. It's it's in the DMSF. Like, right okay, great. It actually, is a okay. psychological state. Of okay, great. Trauma. Are there are there people who see things? Dude, if are there people who see things that don't exist? Yeah. Okay. So when someone says there's something over there, now should I affirm that there's something over there, or should I tell, uh, con uh, con affirm to them that they're just imagining that it's okay? Which one should I do? It depends on the patient. Sometimes the, they they say that you're supposed to uh, just acknowledge their delusion. Sometimes you can point it out. Sometimes you're supposed to go along with it. It depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I'm told. Okay, so in this event, so I don't know, Jim, how do you Bob, know? But I, okay, honestly, how, man, I'm at three percent battery life great, right now. Wait, go I, I, go I, till it dies. Is there anything Let's else give you, you want to say? Yeah, one more question. If it depends on the person, how are we supposed to know whether it's harmful, helpful, or neutral to affirm someone else's internal delusion? From my point of view, tell, teach my kids to affirm something that doesn't comport with their framework or their religious views. How are you supposed to know, depending on the person, when, when you're supposed to entertain their views or not, right, Grayson? Well, you could either listen to other people or you could listen to the science, which shows that what? it does make an impact whenever trans people are validated by the social, like, people the relationships around how do you do, does that doesn't answer the lives. question i asked stuff. you i asked you how well, do you know when it doesn't i said it i asked you how do you know when it doesn't the other person i said listen to other people the other person could tell you that's you what's in question be respectful dude. of other people around you okay let's dude, do this, this one more time a someone statement. dude be respectful of others no you be respectful of me who doesn't want to affirm something that occurs to me as a lie you don't respect me, Grayson. You're a hypocrite. It's you guys are such not little. A lie. It is a lie from my internal framework. You just you even from your physicalist view, Grayson. If everything's reduced to internal frameworks, sure. just like Andrew demonstrated, no, I you can't tell. That. Listen, you can't tell me I'm lying. I if acknowledge everything. It. If everything I'm saying is an internal conflict to affirm yeah. something that I don't believe I in, you're telling me I should. I should I? I agree that within your moral framework, you might consider that it's a lie. But the thing is, is that you are incorrect and can be proven and demonstrably so empirically. No, it can't. No, because it's arbitrary, just like the fan ex no, example. No, it can't. Great freaking comeback. You can't prove to someone's a man or a woman. You can't prove it. It's in their brains. It's being generated by you their brains. You can't. How do you prove someone's a man or a woman, Grayson? It's a social construct. You, you can't find a social brain. construct. How do you comport a, a brain activity with a social construct and say that it's true? 
because it's being generated by the brain. Your concept of gender identity is currently right now being generated in your brain and it can be measured. What is it comporting with that's real such that you can say it's true? Out in the world. Like it is in the category, like the gender identity currently being generated is of the category of male or woman or in between or man okay. or woman or in between or the, whatever. In, I'll it's ask the this again. the nature of that pattern. Dude, no, no, the data in the brain is referring to something external in the world you call a social construct, how men and women are expected to behave, dress, wear, how they stand, all this stuff, right? I'm saying, what is it in the external world that you're saying the neurological system is reflecting? If the, if the thing that it's reflecting is a right, total right, right. Okay, okay, fiction so here, construct. Let me, let, me, let me explain, let me explain. So I know you're not going to like this, but please bear with me for just one second with it, okay? Because we acknowledge that the thing that made something red versus blue or whatever is the frequency of light, and that's an objective thing or whatever. But the, the thing that makes the, the gender identity like man or woman is that it's a di slightly different pattern of the circuitry in the brain generating that gender. So it's like the actual characteristic, the physical shape of the pattern is different between a gender identity that's being generated for a man or versus a woman in the same way that the frequency is different for blue versus red. Okay, like, great. So great. So you're saying in the brain, there's a physical pattern and the pattern, you look at it visually and you say, that's a man. And you look at another one, it says, that's a woman, right? I'm saying, what is yeah, what are you yeah. referencing out in the world to know to label that a man or a woman? Like the social construct in society. So the so brain what you would do activity is you would establish you would establish um, you, you would basically establish a sample size of like known men, known women based okay. on the cultural situation. And that would be your okay. two baselines that you would then compare okay, great. that brain so, against. That's great. So look, I'll give you a little fun example here. Someone goes in, they get their brain activity in, in America. Dude, my, right? my phone they is about at, to die too. Okay, great, right. Okay, great. So the person gets their brain activity, the doctor says you're a man. By, you know, we looked at the brain activity. In our hypothetical of going to another country, they go to another country. The doctors in that country look at the same exact pattern, and you're saying that it could be not a man in the other country? Sure, yeah. If the country is different, then the baseline is going to be different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, And yeah, it could yeah. be more similar to the other country's baseline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's no actual standard oh, oh, to no, refer to. Oh, no, things are different in different countries? Do you, uh, is you, this a you, new thing that you've never come across before, that, you that don't concepts under, can have different connotations in different countries? You have no really? idea what you... You have no idea what you just did to your own position, but uh, thanks for ha coming on. <laughs> I appreciate it, Grayson. Well, Come back anytime, common. okay? People know that different concepts are different in different con mm -hmm. countries. Like, this is very okay, common. Cool. Anybody that travels yeah. knows this. Great. So, two doctors, okay. right? Well, hey, it was two a pleasure talking with you, Tim Bob. Real pleasure, as always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem.